Hello. Dr. Levine. Nick. Nice to meet you. Michelle. Michelle, nice to meet you. And this is Sky. Sky, how you doing there? We've had him since he was a puppy. Have you? Yes. My oh, wow. son, who was in college, still on his mom and dad's payroll, um, decided <laughs> that he would get a dog, and it was a pit bull. I always imagined myself with something just fluffy and cuddly. And right. Then he told me it was a pit bull, and I was like, oh. Uh. <laughs> so I wasn't Surprise. thrilled. Yeah, I was not thrilled at all, in the least, until he brought him home, and he was about this tiny. I fell in love with him instantly. He's always just been... Like, my guy, like, even he's got me through breakups, through school problems, anything. It's my best friend. His stomach looks a little distended. Has it been like that? I thought maybe it was my imagination. Hasn't been eating much? Really listless and not eating at all, which is very rare for him. I tried peanut butter. Okay, he doesn't want peanut butter. There's something, <laughs> something going on. Yeah. Any vomiting? No vomiting. OK. Last night when I got home from work, he was drinking a lot more than okay. he normally does. I am, you know, concerned about the abdomen. There's a couple things that can cause that. It could be fluid, uh, which may be blood. It could be heart failure. It could be gas. Sometimes the stomach will twist on itself. That's a very life-threatening condition. We need to figure out quickly what type of condition we're dealing with. I'd like to probably start off with some x-rays. Alrighty. So let me take them back and uh, see what we got. <laughs> We're getting an x-ray on Sky. Uh, he came in this morning. His abdomen is very distended. So it's very concerning that there's something going on there. So we're going to take a look. Oof. Hey, Blue. Yeah. Man, you got to come see this. Yikes. The owner just noticed the abdomen get distended, like, recently. That takes up the entire abdomen. You can't see intestines, the colon, the stomach is pushed way up. The liver look like it's all squished. What's the game plan for this? I gotta go talk to the owners, but we need to go to surgery, I think, like, right now. Yeah, we've seen these go south before, so. The biggest thing I'm worried about is when I'm trying to get this thing out of there, if it starts to break apart, it starts to rupture, and he's bleeding, trying to deal with that and tie off, you know, vessels and everything. I mean, that... It's a monster. This might be the biggest mass I've seen. That thing's so big, he could just start bleeding any minute. Yeah. So we got a serious thing going on here. We have a very large mass in the abdomen. It's pushing all the organs you know, out of the way. If you look right here, this is him laying on the side. This whole thing here is, is a big, huge mass. Something this large tells me that this is kind of aggressive and it's growing very rapidly. So how long do you think it has been there? I think it's been developing for some time. If we don't do something right away, he's going to get more uncomfortable. And I don't think we'll have very much time. This is probably one of the largest abdominal masses that I've seen. Really? Yeah. I'll be honest, I have to assume that it probably is cancer. to prepare the family for the worst case scenario, but until we remove the mass and send it out for testing, we're not gonna know for sure if it's cancer or not. The good news is I don't see any evidence of fluid in the abdomen, so that would suggest like possibly we're, we're bleeding internally. So that makes me more hopeful and maybe this is a, a splenic mass. Which, which would be the best case would, scenario. Which would be good because we can remove the spleen um, they can live without the spleen. I've, I've had some large splenic masses come back benign. I don't know what it's like to have a child, but this is right. my child, so I, I, I put him all my trust into your hands. Sure. <laughs> sure. I'm just asking him, please get him through it. That's all. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do everything we can to give him the best care. I'll give you guys a few minutes, you know, if you wanna okay. just spend some time with them. Love you, buddy. Bye bye, Pooh. We never saw this coming. I thought I would bring him here and we'd get a pill or something to fix him, a quick fix, and we'd be on our way back home and he'd be fine. So, this has been devastating to us. I just hope he's all right. He'll be okay. Yeah. We are here for Sky. Sky surgery was successful and definitely one for the books. 
This was a massive mass. It was 16 pounds. It's definitely the largest mass I've ever removed in my career. Sky's family's here to see him now, and I can't wait for him to reunite with his family so they can see how he did after this incredible surgery. This is that calling every day, right? Ah, it's just been weird without him. They miss you. You want to go home today? All right. All right, there he is. Come here. <laughs> Stinky. He's just there we go. There's hope. No, 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 no. I missed you. My goodness gracious, we missed you. Oh, yeah, it's almost like you yeah. got a tummy tuck. Right? I need to have one of those. He did get a tummy tuck. <laughs> Surgery went really well. He's a champ. It was by far the largest tumor I've had to remove. It was 16 pounds. Oh my God. It was like birthing a baby, I'm telling you. <laughs> On another note, we did send out a, a, a sample of that tissue. They didn't see any evidence of cancer. Thank God. In some cases, you get the best possible outcome. And this is one of them. This was the best possible scenario for Sky. It was a benign hematoma, no cancer. He should be good to go, minus the spleen. Hello, how's it going? I'm Dr. Ross. Juan, nice Juan. to meet you. And this is Diesel. This is Diesel, yes. All right, so Diesel is coming to see me today for his eyes. Correct. We're here today with our dog, Diesel, because his eyes seem very irritated and it seems like it's very painful for him. How long have you noticed this? Since a couple of months old. He had just some discharge on his eye and then just progressively gotten worse. Okay. And he's a puppy. Diesel is a seven-month-old pit bull mix. And I noticed right away that he can barely open his eyes. He has a large amount of ocular discharge and you can definitely tell he's uncomfortable. Yes, he's good. What it looked like we have going on here is entropia. So basically entropia is the inward rolling of the eyelid. Okay. And it could be congenital or it could be secondary to some type of trauma, foreign bodies. Entropion is a very common condition that affects dogs with large amount of tissue and skin around the eyelids. Clinical signs of entropion are common in young dogs and can be diagnosed in the first year of life. You can see how his eyelids are rolled under. And so what happened is why he's squinting like that is because the eyelids are rubbing on the cornea. It's gonna cause a lot of irritation. If diesel eyes go untreated, diesel could develop corneal ulcerations, temporary blindness, and possibly losing the eye. What we wanna do first is stain his eye to make sure we don't have any scratches. So if we have any type of irritation, any type of scraping of the eye, you would definitely pick it up on this. It looks it's nice okay. Perfect. Stay, buddy. Can you get that light for me? Perfect. Let me see. So that portion of the eye looks really good. He is kind of squinting, but I don't see anything. So far, the entropion has not affected Diesel's eye. But the longer he stays like this, it can develop into a serious problem. What I recommend doing is called a wedge resection. So I'm gonna have to make a decision right under his lower eyelid, roll it out like this. Is Diesel still gonna look like he used to look? Yeah, he'll look fine. The scars will heal, hair grow back, and you won't even notice he had the surgery. How long is his uh... procedure's gonna take? Yes. Sir. I mean, it's a fairly uh, quick procedure, usually no longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> This is a special dog. I'm kind of scared. This is like my brother. George, you want to say goodbye to him? All right, we'll take good care of him. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think I hear Diesel down the hallway. Oh, I can't wait to see him. Diesel is a pit bull mix that I performed a wedge resection on a few days ago. He's been recovering at the clinic. He looks great. <gasps> hey, buddy. Hello, how you guys Hi. doing, Hi. buddy? Oh, uh, yes. How are you? What are you doing? How are you, buddy? So everything went really well with the procedure. That right eye, we did have to remove a large amount of skin because it was inverted quite a bit. How long does he have to keep the collar for? 10 days. We don't want him to paw at his eyes, causing those stitches to come out. Diesel looks great. His eyes are 
wide open. His incisions look great. Dr. Ross did an awesome job. Yeah, he's ready to go. Handshake, handshake. Ah, yes. Good boy, yes, 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 yes. Good to see you back, buddy. Hi, Dr. Levine. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hey, how you doing? My name is Phyllis. Nice to meet you. You too. This is chocolate. That's chocolate. Hey, buddy. <laughs> What's up? Oh, yeah, he's not putting any weight on that leg. No. Huh? He can't even really walk on it. Oh, wow. Have you always had chocolate, like, since a puppy, or? Four weeks. Since 2009. Oh, wow. I imagine, you know, you've had him since he was four weeks old. I mean, he must be like a brother or a son to you. At least with me every day. I think humans really can learn a lot from animals just because they don't hold any grudges. They love you. Exactly. They greet you as you should be greeted when you come through the exactly. door from a long, hard day, regardless how his day went. So right. the respect, the unity. He don't speak English, but he communicates. Oh, yeah. Dog's love is, I mean, it's truly unconditional. So what I'm doing right here is a little test called a tibial thrust. So when we kind of st stabilize the knee in a you know, slightly flexed position, and then we lift the foot up, if that ligament is torn, it'll cause the tibia to pop forward like that. He definitely does have that. It's pretty easy to elicit. Obviously, right now, it feels like you know we have a full tear. With him acting as painful, uh, not really want to put any weight on that leg, makes me think that we may also have a meniscus tear. The meniscus is, there's actually two in each joint. There are little pieces of cartilage that help stabilize the joint and also acts like a shock absorber, so it kind of gives a little padding in between the bones. When the ACL is torn, it, the, the knee is kind of grinding on it, so a lot of times eventually it'll tear over time, and that usually is more painful. You know, the procedure would be a TPLO, which stands for a tibial plateau leveling osteotomy. What we do is take a, a saw and make a cut in the top portion of the tibia and rotate it so that it um, it flattens out the tibial plateau. All right. So how long do you think you had to be here? Well, I, I do like to keep them for a few days after surgery. I'm not going to lie, but I've never been really separated from them like oh, that. Yeah. So. Well, we'll do everything we can to take good care of them. Get them fixed up as soon as you're ready to say your goodbyes. So I'll leave you guys for a minute and uh, send somebody in to get them. All righty. Nice Appreciate to meet you. Likewise. And I'll give you guys a call as soon as the uh, surgery's done, let you know how everything went. OK. All right, Chuck. I know he in good hands. We'll see you in the back in a few minutes. Everything's going to be all right, man. All right, Chocolate. You ready to go home? Wait, wait, wait. Don't do too much. Chocolate's been doing great for us following his surgery. He's putting a little bit of weight on that okay, foot. Okay. And I'm sure Chocolate can't wait to be reunited with his dad and his grandmother. All righty. Hey, Chocolate. And he's pulling to get, <laughs> pulling to come up in here. He's running choking. You feel good, huh? That's the best thing happened to you to get that surgery. <laughs> yeah. The biggest thing is going to be trying to keep him restricted, not doing too much. He's, he's wanting to be active, but he's doing real good. That uh, cruciate ligament, there wasn't much left to it. It was gone. And he did tear his meniscus, and I think that's why he was so painful. So I had to remove a nice portion of the meniscus, but that's not going to be flopping around inside the joint there, causing that pain. I just want him resting at home. I don't want him doing too much, even if he's just going outside to use the bathroom. I want him on a leash. No, oh, for no, real? Yeah, no off-leash activity for now. No running? Mm -mm. No nothing? No, just... Oh, OK. You know, watch some TV and come back in about another week to get the staples taken out. Well, I'm happy. Good. How do you feel? Chocolate He's happy. ready to go. He's, he's, he's been happy. missing you guys. I know he's ready yeah. to go. You outdid yourself. You know that. No, he was great, so... OK. I right. appreciate you, Doc. Take care. All right. Thank have a good you one. so much. All right, Target. I've been calling him Chocolate. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Dr. Levine, how are you? Demetrio, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. This must be Jazzy, yes, huh? Yes, sir. All right, let's get her up on the table here. This is my pet dog, Jazzy. She's pretty spunky. She's the queen bee. 
So uh, she's been paralyzed or, or not walking? Yeah, for... for about the last year. She lost okay. use of the back half of her body. Jazzy is a seven-year-old dachshund and has intervertebral disc disease. Basically, it's just a degenerative change in the disc between the vertebrae. Some dogs may just be a little wobbly in the back end, all the way to full-blown paralysis. She seemed to get around okay? Oh, yeah. She's a speed demon. She does? You know, what she has left. Yeah? Yes, sir. <laughs> what brings you in today? Uh, we want to get her spayed, and she also has okay. a uh, hernia, I believe. A hernia, is basically, it's a defect that is allowing stuff that's supposed to be contained in the abdomen to be displaced. I can feel a little defect here in the body wall. You know, the question is, what do we have coming through there? You know, sometimes it's just fat, you know, from inside yeah. the abdomen, or sometimes we get some actual intestines coming through there. Okay. And that's a bigger problem. If the hernia isn't repaired, then we can get some of Jazzy's intestines going through there and possibly getting strangulated, which can cut off the blood supply to that portion of intestines. Could be life-threatening, so we want to get in there and get this fixed. Let me go take her back, and uh, we'll get a quick x-ray for the, the hernia, kind of see maybe what's coming through there. All right, Jazzy, let's let her down this way. It's OK, Jazzy. Good girl. So you can see the, the swelling right here, but good news is I don't see, it doesn't look like there's any intestines or her bladder or anything coming through there. So that's good news. We need to get some blood work on her because uh, I think we're, we're going to get her spayed and fix the hernia. I'm going to transfer these and so I can show the owner. All righty. All done? Yeah, she's done. Okay. I'm going to pull these x-rays up and show them to you. This is the, you know, the area of the hernia. The biggest thing I was concerned about is whether or not you know some intestines or anything was coming through, and that looks looks good. Since we're going to be going in there and spaying her, if anything's coming through there, we'll, we'll pull that back up into the abdomen and then you know, get that closed up. It's an owner's preference to get their pet spayed at any time in, in that pet's life, but if we could do this now, it'll reduce her chances of pyometras, which is an infection in the uterus, and that can be life-threatening. So spaying her now is going to hopefully alleviate those uh, complications that she may encounter. As far as her spine, they actually do make little wheelchairs. I think she would actually do really good with the wheelchair. So, you know, if you want us to look into getting one ordered, uh, we could definitely do that for you. All right, that's awesome. Okay, yes, cool. Sir. I'm excited to see her kind of zip around. And <laughs> Get out on that racetrack yeah. or something. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and run her blood work and you know make sure everything's okay for you as far as her surgery, and uh, we'll get her all set up. All right, thank you. Not a problem. All right, Jazzy, let's go. Call her name so she can hear you. Come on, Jazzy. Let's go. In you go. Come on. In you go. Good girl. Look at you. There she goes. Little speed demon. Yeah, she's getting around real good in there. <laughs> These little wheelchairs they have for these dogs are really great. They're specifically designed for dogs. Oh man, look at her, she yeah. fancy now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jazz is getting a second chance at being a dog. I can see a sense of confidence back in her, so I'm happy, she's happy. So everything's okay with yeah, the hernia? Everything, and everything, yeah. Went to go spare, and when I was pulling the uterus, I felt it actually pull through that hernia, so that's what was going up oh. in there. So once I pulled that out, you know, that, that went down. Let me show you the incision there. Right there, memory was all yeah. bulging and swollen, that's going down. So just kind of watch the incision for any swelling or discharge. Okay. But uh, everything's looking good. Yeah, she ought to get plenty of exercise with this thing now. Oh yeah, she's, uh, she's gonna be hell on wheels. <laughs>